Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of talking on the wind chargers. I had a lot of people asking me questions and commenting on this 6 volt super deluxe wind charger from about 1939 that I brought back from Saskatchewan on a trip this summer. Um, and this, what you see in front of me, is a 12 volt wind charger, which is a newer model introduced in about the 70s or the 80s. I'm not sure who actually produced them, if Winco that owned wind chargers later on or bought their name. I don't know how that all worked. If they released them and used the name and the old design, they slightly modified some stuff to make it usable newer 12 volt power. But it's pretty well the same concept. They used a lot of the same designs and, you know, it just goes to show that the old wind chargers were a good design. But anyways, we're just gonna do a little bit of talking on why wind chargers existed and why wind generators existed. You know, the big eight foot water pumping windmills with, you know, they got 18 blades, the iconic farm windmill, they exist to pump water. And that's the purpose that they serve. They're back geared a lot of the models and, you know, they got a lot of torque for pumping water. They aren't high speed though, and that's not good for producing electricity. So back in the thirties, when Everybody was settling the West and North America. You know, they were checking into the homesteads out in North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, just starting South in Kansas, like all, all across the plains, Texas, whatever, up into, you know, you know, even Wisconsin, like all those, all the states, there's way too many for me to name. I'm just picking them off the top of my head. And then up into where I'm from in Canada, up across Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, you know, it was all prairies. These people were showing up to plots of land in the middle of nowhere. They don't know where stuff is. They don't know where they're, you know, like <laughs> they, it's, it's crazy watching the hit history on them. Anyways, they're out there in the middle of nowhere. There's no power and they needed electricity. So that's why wind chargers existed. So before the Rural uh, Electrification Act, where they put power through to everybody, once grid roads were installed, everything, uh, before all that stuff, and even, you know, in once that happened, there's a lot of rural areas that didn't have electricity. So Wind Charger and a bunch of other companies came up with windmills, or wind generators, I should say, that produced enough power, you know, to run a little bit of a light bulb so you didn't have to use a kerosene lantern. You know, it, it charged some little dry cell batteries that they had back in the day and you just set you'd run some power into your house or you know you'd have it outside however whatever farmer rigged it up but the more proper systems were brought into a house with just a little bit of batteries and they just had a little six volt farm radio that you would run and the farmer could listen to a little bit of music or you know listen to the the news what was going on in the world and he could see weather forecasts and stuff like that just get a little update on what's going on in the world because they're out there on their homestead or farmstead i should say and that's why they existed really because there was a lot of parts of america or north america and you know even south america across in other countries that just didn't have power and there was a need for power so these were just a you know small generator didn't produce a lot but it just got by what the basic needs were for people so as the years evolved they slowly got phased out they tried different marketing things by different higher voltages and you know trying to get people to stay on track and keep their company going but in the reality of it is is that power was coming through on hydro poles and people were connecting to the grid and they had everything they needed then and that's just the way it went so anyways they're cool to collect they're fun and the company was, you know, not out of business for a long time. They didn't produce them for a long time. And then in the, I want to say late seventies, early eighties or so, mid eighties, I really couldn't find a year. They came out with these wind charger, heavy duty, 12 volts. They're basically the same as that, but it has this massive, massive 12 volt generator, which my grandpa said was very familiar to ones on a lot of his cars. So. I don't know if these were Delco or what these ones were actually, but you know, basically they take the guts of a Delco generator, they modify the end caps on them or what we're going to call them end caps and they retrofit it to hold a blade on the end and there you go, you're producing power. Put a blade on it and there you go. Anyways, that's enough 
jabbering on, but that's why the wind charger existed. You know, people didn't have power, so. It was hard for me to find any of them in Ontario. They were easy to find in the West because that's, you know, that's where they didn't have power for a long time. But Ontario here, they really had had power lines through. I, I don't want to give a certain number, but they had them through early in the years, like the early 1900s, they had power run through to a lot of rural areas and they didn't have to worry about producing electricity off of the wind. They were hooked up to the grid already which makes them really rare to find. I've never actually found one here in Ontario, the exception of this here, but this 12 volt one, like I said, was produced in the seventies or eighties and I really don't classify it an original one. That's why I still put it outside and let it make power and let it do its thing. It's kind of just a little fun hobby. So I'm gonna show you just the inside of these things, show you how they work and we'll stop rambling on uh, the reason why it's apart is I got these new bearings for it. We're gonna put them in, put it together, and hopefully get this thing back out on the stand and get it producing some electricity. Okay, with their bearings now in there, you can see they went in really nice. I, I tapped the one in on the far end of the big cast piece. I just generally like doing that very lightly with a hammer, tap them in gently. But on this one, I've used my bearing driver and it went in just nice. These are nice and wide bearings, so they go in, they don't get crossed too easy. So anyways, you just got your standard negative and positive brush and you know, your armature, reluctor, anyways, Everything's in very, very good shape. None of the bearing surfaces are wore at all on either end. They're all really, really nice. Armature is really in good shape. There was a bit of rust on it, pitting, that I cleaned off here just to clean it up. Probably wouldn't have mattered. But either way, it's not on there to be balanced better too. Not that it spins that extremely fast. And, uh, you know, around our coils and magnets and stuff, I cleaned them up a bit and... You know just got the rust off but our uh, our springs here are very very nice i'll reach into here they got nice tension the brushes are like new and you know there's really nothing to worry about replacing in here besides those bearings making noise from sitting the story of this when i got it was that the tail over here was bent right over at a 90 degree angle and apparently this guy was like a genius that owned it but he didn't know that when you mounted this to your barn roof that you couldn't anchor to the tin. He went right, he didn't go into a stud or into a rafter and it just peeled out of the tin and fell over within a month or two. So apparently this thing sat most of its life and by the look of the brushes and everything, that's that's definitely true. So anyways, we're just gonna get to throw in our armature in here. And which is really nice with all these access panels that you can just slide it in and I can pull back the brushes with my fingers and allow it to go in without too much trouble here.
bearings are in nice and quiet those are just the brushes you hear I'm gonna test for power here got the tail on got uh, our base plate here our turntable on I just put a zip tie around it so I can put it up in there and then cut that off so those don't fall out our power comes out of the generator and then it goes on to a set of brushes on the top of the tower and gets transmitted through these onto the brushes and then goes down some wires so it can spin around and produce power so we're gonna get to putting this thing up we are just heading out to the windmill there's the water pumper turning nicely can't even feel a breeze anyways i just tipped over the tower and i'm gonna slide this on this is your brake wire that you slide up they used to have a bit of a different design from factory but either way you can just apply the brake so it doesn't spin got our blades here and basically here i just have this you know bolt it to this wood and then i just put weights on the wood so i can bring it up and down as i please since i'd been experimenting with a couple different mills anyways i'm just gonna heat this up and these are what i call their collector rings there that's where those brushes on there go on to these buses here and one i believe this one is our positive goes to here negatives on the other side goes down and i got a little battery down there charges All right, next day, we are getting wind through here. Awesome, in the summer, as you can see, it's all leaves and stuff, but this thing is spinning good. We barely have a wind, as you can see, the water pumper here, it always spins because it's got so much torque, I guess you could say, off of all the blades, so it spins in really light breezes. But this thing with the new bearings, I'm super impressed. We're gonna do a little bit of amperage readings here and, or, voltage reading see if we're getting anything off of it once the wind picks up here hopefully a little bit and uh, do a bit of testing and finish off the video well we're gonna be saving the wind charger video testing if you're still here at this point in the video and want to watch the next one we're gonna be uploading it in a bit because I'm having to dig out my windmills it's kind of like owning a lowered vehicle right now you know anyways they're on display we just are clearing them out we got dumped on with snow so i'm just waiting i gotta i can't even find my battery it's down there somewhere but anyways it was just spinning but we're gonna finish off the video if you like my wind charger videos please give me a subscribe and wait for some new videos once the snow stops a little bit we're gonna start uploading again